the day we keep the feast of the Dormition of the Blessed Virgin Mary. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Virgin Son, Christ the Lord, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, pardon not your hearts, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. And to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Virgin Son, Christ the Lord, O come, let us adore him. Psalms 45, 46, and 87 are said on this feast of the Dormition. My heart overfloweth with a good matter. I speak the things which I have made concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Full of grace are thy lips, because God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thee with thy sword upon thy thigh, O thou most mighty, according to thy worship and renown. Good luck have thou with thine honor. Write on, because of the word of truth, of meekness and righteousness and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thy arrows are very sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, and the people shall be subdued unto thee. Thy seat, O God, endureth forever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Wherefore, God, even thy God, 
hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh, aloes, and cassia, out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters are among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand doth stand the queen in a vesture of gold, wrought about with divers colors. Hearken, O daughter, and consider, incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king have pleasure in thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be with a gift, like as the rich also among the people shall make their supplication before thee. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins that be her fellows shall bear her company, and shall be brought unto thee. With joy and gladness shall they be brought, and shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy father, thou shalt have children, whom thou mayest make princes in all lands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be moved, though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters there rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same. There is a strip river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most Highest. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her, and that right early. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are moved. But God hath showed his voice, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. O come hither, and behold the works of the Lord, what destruction he hath brought upon the earth. He maketh wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow, and nappeth the spear in sunder, and burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Her foundations are upon the holy hills. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of thee, thou city of God. I will make mention of Egypt and Babylon, among them that know me. Behold Philistia also, and Tyre with Ethiopia. Lo, in Zion were they born. Yea, of Zion it shall be reported, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High shall establish her. The Lord shall record it when he writeth up the peoples. Lo, in Zion were they born. The singers also and trumpeters shall make answer, All my fresh springs are in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the second cha chapter of the Song of Solomon beginning at the first verse. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty. Thine adorable, true, and only 
Holy Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is written in the 12th chapter of the Revelation of St. John, beginning at the first verse. In those days there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. She being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be, to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. For the dragon stood before the woman, to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand, two thousand, and threescore days. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant. To perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who didst endue with singular grace the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, vouchsafe we beseech thee to hallow our bodies in purity and our souls in humility and love. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, 
neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who didst take to thyself the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of thine only begotten Son. Grant that we, being redeemed by his blood, may share with her in the glory of thine everlasting kingdom. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson for the epistle is written in the third chapter of the book of Judith, beginning at the 17th verse. Blessed be thou, O our God, which hast this day brought to naught the enemies of thy people. O daughter, blessed art thou of the Most High God above all the women upon the earth. And blessed be the Lord God, which hath created the heavens and the earth, which hath directed thee to the cutting off of the head of the chief of our enemies. For this thy confidence shall not depart from the heart of men, which remember the power of God forever. And God turned these things to thee for a perpetual praise, to visit thee in good things, because thou hast not sparked thy life for the affliction of a nation, but hast revenged our ruin, walking a straight way before our God. Thou art the exaltation of Jerusalem, Thou art the great glory of Israel. Thou art the great rejoicing of our nation. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the first chapter beginning at the 39th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time Mary arose and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud, in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats 
and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead his kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. What's uh, true today is true of every feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's a testimony to the truth of the Incarnation. A testimony to the truth that for us men and for our salvation, the Son of God became Son of Man in the womb of the Virgin, so that the sons of men might be made the sons of God. And so to honor Mary, as we do, as the mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, is in fact to honor Christ himself. And one might go so far to say, if we cannot honor Mary on such terms, then there is perhaps something deficient about the honor that we render Christ. Every feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary is a testimony to Christ, but it's also uh, a testimony to her faith, the faith demonstrated so decisively in her response to the angel's message, that first proclamation of the gospel, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. As Augustine said, before Mary conceived Christ in her womb, she had conceived him in her heart by faith. And so Mary is a model, an exemplar of Christian believing, of Christian discipleship, and of the humble obedience of faith, the faith by which we receive Christ in all the saving benefits of his death and sacrifice for us. But today, on the feast known as the Dormition or Assumption of the Blessed Virgin, we celebrate a further dimension of the grace that she re received by faith in Christ. For the word of God was made flesh precisely so that flesh might share in the life of God. And that is what we celebrate today. This feast has, as we've noted, two names, Dormition, which means falling asleep, and Assumption, which means taking up. The faith of the church from ancient times is that when Mary fell asleep in the Lord and departed this life, she was immediately taken up into glory, not only in soul, but also in body. In the picturesque legend, the grave was opened and found only filled with roses. We've no explicit warrant of scripture to Mary's assumption. 
And so we cannot accept, uh, require it to be believed for salvation as a dogmatic truth. Yet, at the same time, I don't think we can deny it is an important testimony to the indubitable truth of the gospel and that it is entirely consistent with it. For it is in the New Testament that we find the death of a Christian spoken of as falling asleep. And this is not as it would be in our own death-denying culture, a euphemism for an unpleasant thing we don't like to think about, but rather a deep insight into the nature of the life that has been given Christians in Christ. The grace of eternal life, which begins even now in our bodily life in this world, in which death cannot take away from those who believe. In the perspective of Christian faith, death may bring us sorrow in taking away from us the people we love. But in the end, it is of no great consequence. It is but a falling asleep before we wake again. For Christ, by his death and resurrection, has conquered death. And for those who believe, death is therefore but a release from temptation, from sin, from pain and sorrow. It is an entrance into rest from our labors, repose and refreshment in the peace of paradise. It is, as I said, a falling asleep before we wake and rise again in the glory of that day which, whose light knows no setting. To call this feast Dormition, falling asleep, is to say something true and important about the life eternal that is already ours in Christ, which death cannot take away. But to call it assumption is to say something true and important about the glory that shall be ours on the far side of death, in body as well as soul. Like certain saints of the Old Testament, Enoch, Moses, and Elijah, Mary, it is said, was taken up in body and soul into glory, which is to say that by the special grace of her son, she has anticipated the resurrection which all the faithful shall enjoy when Christ comes again. So her assumption is a anticipation of our own destiny. The grace of eternal life, which is given to us, is the beginning in us of glory yet to come. And how fitting it is that the human being by whom the word was made flesh should be the first to share, the first flesh to share the life of God. Very fittingly, we read her Magnificat, Mary's song of exultation in the victory of God. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. Mary celebrates the great reversal, turning the world upside down, the proud made humble, brought low, and the humble lifted up. But is this the world turned upside down, or rather the world turned right side up? For indeed, we celebrate in her assumption the great and final reversal, that life does not end in death, but rather death gives way to life. In celebrating her victory over death, and her exaltation to glory, we celebrate the victory and exaltation that awaits all Christians, which is nothing else than the victory and exaltation that Christ himself has already won for us. On this day in Mary, we anticipate the fullness of our redemption. We live in a culture which is often noted is characterized by denial of death and what follows death. Where in the face of death, we have trouble thinking or speaking or acting with honesty or with hope. But if this feast we keep today means anything to us, it means a renewal of our minds in the perspective of the Christian faith, in the teaching of the gospel, in the death and resurrection of our Lord. 
And so I leave you with some famous lines of John Donne, words of splendid contempt for the pretensions of death. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be, much pleasure, then from thee much more must flow, and soonest our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and souls' delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dost with poison, war, and sickness dwell, and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke. Why swell'st thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. God is not unrighteous, that he will forget your works, and labor that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints, and yet do minister. I bid your prayers today for the glory in heaven and honor on earth of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For all those who bear her name, that, they may follow the exa- that we with them may follow the example of her lively faith and humble obedience to the word of God. I bid your prayers for the hope that is given to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that through death we may pass to that fullness of life which is beyond all imagining here and now. Of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers. that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, 
we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hail Mary, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Son of Mary, Son of the living God, have mercy on us now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection. To the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always.